So for how long have you been having these feelings of inadequacy? Uh, I, I guess probably about three years ago on my Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube channel, there was this deck called Armed Dragon Catapult Cannon, and I just couldn't make it work. It's been bothering me ever since. Wait, you have a Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube channel? You don't think that could be connected to your feelings of inadequacy? Hey, no. No, that's normal. That's, that's a thing that normal people have and do. Come on! Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. Another month, another Sisyphusian task to please my patrons. This month, they demanded an Armed Dragon Thunder video, and unfortunately, the archetype will primarily be used as another extender in Dragonlink. However, easy access to Armed Dragon Level 7 enables another archetype, one that has loomed large in the back of my mind for the past four years. I am speaking, once again, of Armed Dragon Catapult Cannon. Before we begin, if you're on the fence about subscribing, let me sweeten the pot for you. Click that little button below the video and I'll play this exact list again, but using OCG Fusion Tag rules. So here's the list, and ha ha ha, weren't expecting Ojamas, were you? As always, I'll give you background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the Quarantine Series deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. With that, let's amble into Armed Dragon Thunder. Armed Dragon is one of three Chaz Princeton archetypes, and like all of them, it's not very good. Previously, they were part of the short-lived LV monsters famously used in the final duel by Yugi and then desecrated by years of unplayable support. Their gimmick is, if they survive until the standby phase, you can activate an effect and tag into a higher level version of the monster from your deck. Shockingly, monsters that have to remain on the field for multiple turns tend not to do particularly well. In acknowledgement of this unresolvable issue, Konami printed some retrains that, uh, completely disregard it. The new armed dragons can discard a card and be sent to the graveyard to summon a higher level one from the deck, culminating in a boss monster that honestly sucks. None of the midpoint bosses have any positive effects whatsoever, but they do have the same name as their pre-trains. Our end goal with this deck is to summon a monster with the material requirement of VWXYZ and armed dragon level 7. Shockingly, we can accomplish this Herculean feat through the use of a one card, Ojama Blue. Through a combo that defies logic and explanation, a single normal summoned speedo-clad freak can convert into Chaz's game-ending Chungus with a little help from our new dragons. Ideally, we'll blind second and walk an Ojama Blue into a monster, searching Ojama Match and Ojama Magic. We'll pitch the magic and search three Ojamas, an armed dragon, and an Ojama Blue that we'll then normal summon. We'll send him as well, then search Match and Assimilation, before repeating the process one more time, finally summoning our armed dragon level 3. We'll level him up twice before firing two Ojama Assimilations to make both halves of the Assault Cannon and ideally resolve the dang thing. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, the pieces. V, W, X, Y, Z. Huh. Everything but the good ones. Next, to a piece of Ojama's green, yellow, and black, and three copies of blue. We're also playing three Rescue Cat, which happens to be able to search blue. Finally, our Armed Dragon Thunder and three big rocky boys. For spells, we're on just the basics. Oja Match, two Ojama Simulation, one Oja Magic, and three Armed Dragon Flash. After that, we've got three Dark Ruler No More, an Upstart, a Called By, and a One Day of Peace. In the extra, there's a bunch of stuff we'll never make. There's ADCC, VWXYZ, XYZ, VW, and Antis. For links, we're on Ceruya, Access Code, Appaloosa, Unicorn, Phoenix, Cerberus, Union Carrier, Mascarena, Link Spider, and Clara and Rushka. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Onomatopoeia, so I suppose we'll finally get to see which series is superior. Let's see what this Duel Links role player has in store for us. They're going to lead with Copy Pot of Desires and follow it up with an Onomata Pickup. They'll activate Onomata Para to add a couple of cards to hand before setting this copy of Onomatopoeia and normal summoning a Dodo Dwarf, go 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 up. They'll special summon a copy of Utopic Onomatopoeia and then special summon a copy of Zubaba Bancho Gagaka Coat and a Dodo Dwarf, go 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 from Graveyard, ruining about 15 of my takes as I mispronounce the names. From here, they'll go from double into Kaiser, which would be an FDK if they were playing something competent 
Ascendant, bringing back this copy of Onomatopoeia, and going from Utopia into Utopia Prime into Utopia the Lightning. Finally, they'll end on the effect of Onomatopoeia summoning a Gagaga -Ga -Ga code from deck to overlay for Giant Hand, and the effect of Kaiser getting a <laughs> crazy box at a beyond. Perfect number selection. Unfortunately, we are going to have to activate this Dark Ruler no more because we can't play through the singular negate that Giant Hand represents. We'll go into a couple of copies of Ojama Blue before activating Upstart Goblin and proceeding to the battle phase. We'll walk into the Giant Hand once and activate the effect of Blue. We'll activate the effect of Ojama Match, pitching an Ojama Match and bringing back the Blue so we can walk once again into the Giant Hand. We'll get all our combo pieces to the hand before activating a final copy of Ojama Match, pitching a copy of Ojama Magic, and normal summoning an Armed Dragon. From here in Main Phase 2, we can go from level 3 into level 5, and of course level 5 into level 7. We're halfway there. Now it's time to Fusion Summon. We'll activate Ujama Simulation to get X, Y, and Z. Unfortunately, Assault Dragon Catapult Cannon's effect can only be activated on the opponent's turn, so after we make VW, we'll have to activate the effect of X, Y, Z to get rid of this giant hand, lest it all be for naught. They'll chain the effect of Giant Hand, which of course does nothing. We'll activate Ojama Simulation, putting three Ojamas back into our deck to draw a card, and now it is time to contact Fuse the Master! In draw phase, we'll activate the effect of Assault Dragon Catapult Cannon and banish everything our opponent holds dear. They're not able to activate any of the cards in their hand and pass back to us. Now we just have to find Lethal. We'll activate Ojama Simulation again, picking three more Ojamas to shuffle back into the deck before normal summoning a three and proceeding to battle phase. To be cute, I try to get some more damage in, activating Armed Dragon Flash, but neglect to read the card. We'll go into a Union Carrier and equip this copy of Arm Dragon Catapult Cannon with a rock, I suppose. Our opponent draws another spell and isn't able to play it. We'll activate Arm Dragon Catapult Cannon at end phase to banish all of these cards that were Xyz material before activating Union Carrier again, giving it another stone, and proceeding to do lethal damage. Our second match is up against Zodiac Dogmatica, and unfortunately it answers that age-old question, what do you do when your win condition is removed from the field? Our opponent's going to go from Hammer Kong into Gravity Controller, summoning two Parallel Exceed, one from hand and one from deck. They'll then overlay for copy of Zodiac Chalkanine and activate her effect to bring back this copy of Ram Ram. From here, they can activate the effect of Dryden, targeting the Ram Ram in order to summon back this copy of Chalkanine. Chalkanine is a soft once per turn, so next they can overlay for copy of Tiger Mortar and activate her effect to put something under the Chalkanine so the Chalkanine can bring back an Xyz monster. I can't beat Mega Clops, so I'll go ahead and rock here. Our opponent's going to be left with naught but a token until they fire off this copy of Disciple. They're going to add a Flirt Elise to hand, add an end step, trigger the effect of Titan Clad to summon an Ecclesia so they can get a punishment for next turn. This is actually completely winnable. I, I don't really care about Flirt Elise even a little, so I'll normal summon a copy of Ojama Blue and proceed to the battle phase. We'll walk into the token and trigger the effect of Blue, getting an Oja Matching and an Oja Magic. We'll activate Matching Pitching Magic and then trigger the effect of Magic, adding three Ojamas to our hand and summoning an Ojama Blue. We'll walk the Blue back in one more time to get a copy of Oja Matching and Ojama Simulation. Summoning Blue once more, we're going to resolve the third Oja Matching to summon an Armed Dragon level 3. After the battle phase is over, we'll go from 3 into 5 and from 4 five into seven, and then it is time to fusion summon. We'll fire off the first of two Ojama simulations to get XYZ Dragon Cannon. Now unfortunately for us, two of those pieces are in the hand, but no big deal, it can summon from anywhere. We'll fire off the second Ojama simulation, getting V and W, so we can make VW XYZ. We don't want to remove our opponent's monster to play around well, exactly what you see in the hand there. We'll go ahead and activate Ojama Simulation and pass it back to our opponent. I get a little greedy here because my monster isn't threatened, I want them to commit, and they do so with the copy of Dark Ruler No More, they rip off the top of the deck. ADCC does less than nothing under Dark Ruler No More, so they're able to set up with Chalk and I. They'll switch everything to defense position and, oh my god, we lived anyway. Oh, uh, never mind. Dragon Punishment, sending a monster with more than 3,500 attack, apparently. We'll walk into our opponent's board and pass back to them. This is a bit of a stalemate. They're, they're drawing extremely poorly, and we're a one-trick pony. We're going to normal summon a copy of Arm Dragon level 3, and I guess walk in once again. We're getting in for a ton of damage here, and main phase 2 will go into a Masquerina, unfortunately turning on our opponent's copy of Flirt Elise. We'll pass back to them. For turn, they draw a Zodiac Rat Pier. We'll activate Masquerina to go into a copy of Nightmare Unicorn, which we will activate to put the Flirt Elise back. They'll normal summon a copy of Zodiac Rat Pier, but thankfully, they have very little left to send. They'll go into a Borbo and pass it back to us, just missing an Avarice from them. We'll normal summon a copy of Rescue Cat and make access code talker. No sweeter talker than the one that took four normal summons to produce. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Invoked Dogmatica, and given our current record against Dogmatica, I see no reason to believe we'll walk away with anything but a fat W. <sighs> Wait, who's going first? Oh god, uh, maybe if we end our turn quick enough, our opponent won't realize they have access to the battle phase. 
they're going to draw for turn, then normal summon a copy of Alister the Invoker. That's going to add an invocation to hand. They'll link summon an Almirage and a Secure Gardener, then activate invocation in a way that preserves Secure Gardener. They'll activate invocation's graveyard effect and proceed to the battle phase doing 1,000 and 2,500. Nope, make that 3,500. Oh, make that 4,500 damage to our life points. Okay, this is going to be an uphill battle. Still, we might be able to do it. We're going to lead with a copy of Dark Ruler No More, and then search a copy of Rescue Cat. We'll normal summon it, and then tag into two copies of Ojama Blue. From here, we should be able to assemble the Assault Dragon Catapult Cannon. We'll trigger the first blue in Graveyard, and then we'll go for the second one, at which point our opponent will reveal Ice Dragon's Prison. Okay, we still should have enough. We'll go from Match into an Armed Dragon Thunder level 3. We'll trigger the effect of Magic and walk over the Secure Gardener. In Main Phase 2, we'll activate 3 and Infip as well! Are you kidding me?! Okay, there's still a scenario in which we can do this. If we pitch all the Ojamas from our hand via XYZ's effect, we can potentially draw two cards using Ojama Simulation's graveyard effects. If they are matching and any Ojama card, we do win. <gasps> there's matching. Any Ojama card. Any Ojama card. Any Ojama card at all. <gasps> oh my god, we did it. We'll get level 5. We'll tribute summon level 5. Activate its effect and... The last card in hand is Gamma. You have got to be kidding me! An invocation off the top! I'm quitting Yu-Gi-Oh. So, it's time for game two, and first again, no thank you. So, we're back with the deck, and, huh, that doesn't sound right. I was supposed to lose every game, not take a majority. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, this is unironically the best shell yet for Armed Dragon Catapult Cannon. It truly is the chassiest deck around. Two, ADCC does pretty much win the game. Any competent deck will make it through 30 or 40 of the cards in their deck on the first turn, and locking them out is likely to prevent anything from going awry for the rest of the game. And three, it's a one card. For longtime viewers of the channel, you know how much I would have killed for a one card in 2017. And the cons. One, blinding second right now. Folks, it's not good. Not only does it mean you've got to draw Dark Ruler or die, it also means you're going to have to potentially contest with all manner of buster locks. Two, ADCC is kind of an ass payoff. To quote 2017 Joseph, it doesn't even float. You can negate your opponent's interaction on your turn, but what about on their draw phase? And three, it does die to any single hand trap. This is true of most FTK nonsense right now, but it doesn't make it hurt any less. All in all, I have completed my mission, and will now ascend to heaven. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons, MeepMoto27, Dominic Ernst, Hakuo, Alex Perea, Candyman, Koibo275, Crispy, DimSum05, Innercrest, King Magic Ruler, Lavender Lemonade, Meteor Mirage, Mike Carlotti, Rocky Hernandez, Rose Lapine, Seeker, Space Dandy 1993, Stevie Blunder, Tyler Slacks, Tyrese Biggums IV, Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Amid Elefanti, Algi Smarson Cavitius, Alice Rethy, Andrew Benson, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Angry Brett, Apex Systems, Billy Williams, Blake Root, Candy, Chad Bortz, Chess Prime, Chibi Gohan, Chorps Away, CJ Alex, Cobbin, Connor Kid, Dan the Man Hoban, Darcy Taves, Devin Dees, Dylan Conley, Donnie Fillar, Petistrin, Emperor Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Fangwong, FUTR, Gamer Games, Gavin Charlie Kowski, Isaac Jackson, Jane the Nya, Jared Lorman, Jason Leonard, Jeff Leonard, Jose Luis Cortez, Kaiba Corp Shill, Corey Hess, Kurakaze, Lawrence, Lucas Geardis, Lucky Number 5, Lucas Arizo Hansen, Meadow Edits, Mezzo Emrys, Michael Oskavar, Kamuna Arashi, Nick Extreme 99, Nick Delore, Pro FP2, Pro Yugi Dad, Sam Soon, Sean Dial, Second Standards Objective, Swag Kage, Yuri's Best, Zach Janchuski, Zach McKee, Blah, Dive Missile, Picnic Blast It, This Machine 237, TJ, Steakhouse, and Yuki A. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.